What's going on everybody? Welcome back to our YH Studio. Today we're taking these cool photos and making them into this cool layout. So let's get started. All right, first things first, as everybody knows, we're creating a new document. I'm gonna change this to inches, eight and a half by 11. We're starting on page two, gonna have facing pages checked and we're actually going to have two pages. For the margins, let's keep it at 625. So now that we have the document created, feel free to check out our website and do this along with me. The link will be down in the description below. First thing I'm going to do is go over to the left to the rectangle tool. I'm dragging it from corner to corner and I'm just giving it a nice fill. So I'm going over here and double clicking on the fill and giving it an, a good color. For this particular layout, I already have a color that's selected. So I'm going down here and I'm going to just paste the hex code. Now, the next thing we're going to do is, remember how we had all those cool pictures that we had of the people? Well, I'm going to use something to just remove the background for us that's super easy. So instead of going into Photoshop and manually getting rid of the background and resaving it for ourselves, I use a service called Pixlr and they're actually the sponsors of today's video, but I can go into the remove background and then select photos. I'm just going to select the four photos that we want to remove the background of. Go ahead and hit enter on those. You can see it's going to help us get rid of all the backgrounds for that. And I'm just gonna save everything as a zip. It's gonna save all of them for me and it's going to give me a nice transparent background. So just to show you guys, it did a pretty good job of removing the actual background for us. And that only took like a couple of seconds, which would be really helpful in our workflow. So now that we're back in InDesign, we're going to add the pictures that we just made into InDesign. So go ahead and just drag and drop all three of them. One is over here. I'll move her right here. One over here and the last one like that. So don't forget that you guys can use the shortcut keys, control, alt, shift, and C for fitting content into the frame, as well as control, shift, alt, E for fitting it into the extent of the frame. So once we have it to a size that we think is pretty good, so maybe that goes right there, we can go ahead and place these according to where we think makes sense. And now the composition looks okay, but I feel like uh, this man needs to face the other way. So we're going to go up into objects, transform, and then just flip him horizontally. Now we can still place him right where that is. And it looks a lot better. We want this lady to be the centerpiece, the person in the front. So we're gonna go ahead and select her, right click, go into our arrange, and then bring to front so that she is the biggest picture here. I'm going to just make this guy a little bit smaller and play around with it until the composition makes sense. Okay, great. Now that we have it where we want it to be, we're going to apply some effects to every single one of these. Hey, are you still sealing the seas with your Adobe subscription? Well, maybe it's time to actually get it because of all the cool new AI tools that are out. You can save a lot of time by using Generative Fill in your Photoshop assignments. And if you're watching this video, you'll probably need it anyways. So for the low price of two avocado toast, I have a link down in the description if you wanna support the channel and get an Adobe subscription where you can explore all the different tools that will push your design into the next level. So check that out and support the channel. We're starting with the person in the middle. So I'm selecting the frame itself. I'm going over to effects. If you guys don't have the effects panel, it's going to be in window and then under effects, you just have to check this guy on. Now I'm going over down to this FX tab and I'm hitting drop shadow. So you can see that it defaults to a black color on multiply. We're changing this to paper because it's white and we're actually gonna make this normal because we want it to show as much as we can. I'm going to change the opacity to 100% and I'm actually going to come down to spread and change the spread also to 100%. You can see now that it has a little bit of a paper cut effect, which is really cool. Now there's other ways to do the paper cut effect and you can check out this video in my channel to learn more about how you can clip it in different ways. But coming back into this, we're gonna make the drop shadow in the middle or her um, basically go right around her body. So instead of the X and Y offsets having some value, we're just going to make it so that it's zero so that it creates a nice perfect outline around her shape. And we can change the size of this, but I'm gonna keep it at a nice 0.125 inch. Go ahead and hit okay. Now we're gonna do the same thing to the other two, but it's going to be a little bit different. So I'm gonna do it for this gentleman over here, drop shadow, change it to paper, and then we're going to do normal 100%. 
and then spread is also 100%. For the X and Y offset, we kind of want the person on the right side to have a drop shadow or like a cutout effect that is more leaning towards the right. So here you can see that I can adjust this, uh, the Y offset, or I can adjust the X offset so that the drop shadow here is changing however I want. So I'm just gonna give it a little bit of effect so that it looks like there is a little bit of motion on this page so that everything moves to the right when the person is on the right. And again, we're gonna do this basically with the person on the left as well. Now we're gonna go over to the type tool over here and we're going to give each one of these people a name and a title. So I'm gonna drag a text box out here and just type in what I want. Great, now that I have this, I'm going to go ahead and change this to a font that looks a lot better. So let's use Futura for this particular example. I'm gonna change it to something like an 18 or even a 24 uh, and then I'm going to center justify, so right here. And I'm also going to make the top row or her name uh, a demi or a more bold font. And that looks pretty good. Next, what I'm going to do is actually give it a fill background. So if I go up here and I change it to paper, which is white, it's going to give it a white fill. Now you can see that it's not really the same distance between all sides. So what we're going to do is click on the text box, right click, and then we're going to go into text frame options. In the text frame options, you can see that if I change the inset spacing, it's gonna make a invisible margin around the box that'll keep the text a lot nicer than if it had no spacing on the top there. So we'll do something like this, and then I'm just going to double click on one of the corners here so that it fits everything properly in this text box. Great, so we have one done. And what we're going to do is actually select this and we're going to go into effects once again. And we're actually going to add another drop shadow. So I'm going to hit drop shadow, but this time we're not going to change the color, but we're going to change the blending mode to normal, change the opacity to 100, and also change the spread to 100. Now for the size of this guy, we're actually going to just make this zero. So that's a nice animated, but still very clear drop shadow on the name tag. Now we're going to position in a way that just makes sense and do the same for the other two. Great, now that we have everything in, let's adjust it so that it's more centered on the page. What I'm gonna do is actually select the background and then just lock it by using Control L. So you can see that there's a little lock symbol um, that allows us to move everything else without moving the background. After that, I'm gonna turn all the guides on. I'm just going to drag some nice title text for us. So if this is a meet the team page, then we can do that. I'm gonna change it to our font. And then I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. So let's say something like a 60. I'm also going to change this into our white font and also give it a bit of a placeholder text on the bottom right here and let's use this in 10 point font. And then I'm just going to fill it with placeholder text, write justify and give it the same paper color. And I spelled team wrong, but there we go. Now to start off on the right side, I'm going to go back into Pixlr and we're going to spice up one of our photos. So I'm going to go into photo mash and you can see all these different uh, ways where you can customize your photo. I'm gonna go ahead and select a photo that I want to use. So for example, I want to use this photo right here. It'll help me remove the background for me as you can already see. And then to show you guys what this kind of does, if you just click on a template, it'll edit your photo to that. Remember the original photo that we got from uh, Pexels looks like this and it's able to basically remove the background and put in a nice background design for us. So it makes it super simple. We're gonna go down and make something a little bit simpler just so it fits in with the clean theme of the design. So going all the way down, all the way down to here, shape profiles. And I'm just gonna give it a simple, let's see, Let's use this one. I'm going to change the color just so it's a complementary color to what we have. For example, if we can basically sample this color that is in the background. So if I go ahead and unlock that by double clicking that icon that was just there and I double click into the fill, you can see that this is the hex code for this color. If I go ahead and just copy that hex code 
And then I basically go on Google and I search complimentary color picker and I'm just gonna go to the first one from Canva. And all I'm going to do is paste in that code and you can see that this is a good complementary color to go with it. So I'm gonna copy this color code just by clicking on it, go back into Pixlr and just change the background. So pasting it right here into the hex code. You can customize all the other things like outlines and effects. So for example, if we want the same cutout outline like this, we can do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and just save this. Once we have that and we're back into our InDesign page, I can go ahead and just drag and drop that image and place it somewhere on the page that you think will make sense. For example, if I want that right here, I can basically place that on the bottom left. I think that would be a good composition, so I'm gonna do exactly that. And again, I'm going to finish this page off with a little bit of a caption on the bottom just to balance out the two pages. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy the Anaconda text from the other side and make sure that we're bringing this to front. So right click, we're going to go in to arrange and then bring to front. There it is. I'm gonna make all the text a little bit smaller. So let's use like a, maybe like a 10 also for this. No, let's use a 12 for our caption and Put in whatever caption you think makes sense. Great, that looks good. And then I'm going to just shrink this a little bit and drag it out. Okay, I, I really like the shape of the caption right here, but I'm not a big fan of what's going on with the hyphen. What you can actually do is select this box, go into paragraphs. And if you guys don't have the paragraph tab open, you can go up to window, you can go down to the type and tables, and then switch on paragraph. Now, all you have to do is check off this hyphenate. So I'm selecting this box, uncheck hyphenate, and you can see that nothing is hyphenated anymore. So that's it, that's our super easy layout. We did some pretty cool things with the drop shadow tool and making outlines. If you did follow along, I would love to see it. I'll set up a Discord server so that we can all share. And if you guys haven't, please leave a like, subscribe, share with your friends and do check out our website. It's pretty cool. It's got some really cool resources on there. With that said, that is it for this episode and I'll see you guys in the next one.